be looking at some existing um, Linux drivers um, to get a better idea of what the um, components are and what the API is to write a um, DRM debut render driver for Linux um, so that I can better plan out what my driver is going to look like and uh, what's going to be written in Rust and all that. So, hey, hello everyone, how are you doing? Is everyone doing fine? The audio good as usual? driver for Linux, so I'm, you know, I have a vague idea of the um, parts involved and what kind of things to expect, but uh, not very much concrete, so yeah, um, let's see, let's see how it goes. Oh, Fire's here too, cool! Yeah, for those, uh, those that don't know, uh, Fire actually started with, uh, blah, writing the um, Python uh, tracer stuff that I used uh, to reverse engineer the GPU, so uh, yeah, that's really cool! Let's get started. Let me find my Linux tree in here. If I can find it. Oh, it goes into... <laughs> Sorry, this is just uh, looking something up. to the Rust for Linux um, mailing list last night. Um, and uh, I just replied um, to the first reply um, uh, just a, like a couple hours ago. Um, but basically, what I'm kind of expecting is that we're going to have kind of three parts to the driver. Um, so we're going to have... Um, first, there's the page table management code for the... Um, GPU memory management unit, which is called the UAT. And uh, that's sort of a standalone code that can actually reuse um, existing kernel code. So that um, that might end up being writ uh, written uh, written in C, um, because it's not a you know it's not a very it's a deep part of the driver, but it's not very uh, you know, connected to everything else. Um, so that's one part. Um, the other part is actually managing and allocating those memory objects. So... And that would call into the MMU code. Um, but... That's in charge of the actual, like, memory management. Um, and, uh... Like, of the actual blocks of memory and the CPU, um... Address space. And... So that part, I, um... The kernel DRM interface already provides some features for that. It's called um, GBM, so we would definitely want to use that. Um, but we probably also want to extend it and wrap it to make it safer and um, like higher level to make it easier to manage, especially all the firmware objects. I'm not even sure if that would go through GBM, possibly not. Um, so all the kernel side stuff, we might have our own system, but that's all going to be related to some kind of allocator thing. Um, could be several uh, parts of the code for the kernel objects and the user space objects, but you know, there's there's kind of an interesting question there as to how that's going to be structured. And then finally, of course, all the talking to the firmware parts, uh, and that's uh, everything else really. It includes uh, like init, 
um, stats, syslogs, and of course, from submitting render jobs, actually rendering things on the GPU, um, and uh, finding out when they are done through events, and handling faults. So that's most of the Python driver and most of, yeah, most of the GPU driver, really. Um, so that's uh, that's especially the part I would really want to write in Rust, um, and that would interact with the uh, um, DRM render APIs. But a lot of that is uh, custom per driver anyway. Um, so yeah, let's find out exactly how all these things uh, are implemented in the kernel by different drivers and sort of what um, APIs we can choose uh, to use. So here's the kernel. Um, tree and let's go. So I'm gonna be looking at um, probably two drivers because I asked Uni and she recommended um, Panfrost and uh, what's it called? The I always forget the name. The um, uh, be like Raspberry Pi one. VC four, I think. If I'm not mistaken, or was that V three D? Now I'm confused as to which one it was. So they're VZ4 or V3D, and you know, I don't remember which one. <laughs> but anyway, one of, one of these two was the, um... Hold on, let me see if I can find it in my box. Ah, uh, because I was confused, I was... Ah, uh, hold on. I might not even have that. So they use the more modern um, TRM features and they are um, render only drivers, which is the same as mine. So that uh, should be give us a good example of the kinds of um, APIs that we're going to need. Uh, so let's take a look at the MMU first. Why not? They're both. Oh, this one's really short. One only really has a flash set page table. Hey, and um, insert PTEs. What does what this? Where does this actually do it? Driver and a triangle attempt. Now that that's cool. How is it? So this is like a one level page table? Okay, that's not uh what I expect. Let's try let's look at the pan first one. Okay, so there's some enable, disable, get address space. Let's see what this does. Okay, so this is interesting because we actually um have a 
similar thing here where we have a limited number of address spaces. And for the GPU here, it's up to um, 64. So apparently Panfrost also supports a number of address spaces. Oh, interesting. So there's a warrant there. Um, we'll have to figure out if this is actually handled in the parlor to make sure there's no... There aren't too many address spaces. Um... So yeah, this is similar to what we need. Okay, the fire's talking about the BC4. Um... Apparently it doesn't really have projection, so yeah, that, that's not, that's not um, our case. But this one, this fan first one, looks a lot closer to what we, uh, we would need for uh, for the Apple chip here. Um, am I planning to write the whole driver stack in Rust and maybe stick with C and use Rust for experiments purposes? Um, I don't know yet, um, but I definitely wanted to write a lot of the driver in Rust um, because all the firmware management is pretty complicated and Rust's um, high-level features and safety, I think, will really help getting that right. Um, but what I'm not sure yet is if the sort of core driver, the actual, like, instantiation of the module, is going to be in Rust, or whether that's going to be C that calls into Rust. I'm not sure about that. So that's part of what I'm trying to decide now. Okay, so this looks like a free address space. And it enables the memory. Okay, so that's easy. What? Is, where is enemy hardware to operation? That's up here. Okay, so that's using a command. Yep, that's um. Makes sense. Arizona map. Calls MMU map SG, which looks for the SG table, then calls map. There's a hack here for the 4 gigabyte boundary. Um, there's apparently an, an issue for that. And we might need some code similar to that for handling um, 4K kernels, because the GPU always uses 16K pages. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, that we might need to, some special code to handle that. So it's just using a page table type called arm mali lpae and that's part of the uh, global page table code let's find that yeah so the the trm interface is uh there, it's the same here, right? There's going to be one for 3D and one for um, displaying to the screen. So, in theory, we shouldn't need any special um, handling for TCP as long as it supports the right um, buffer formats. Because user space takes care of that, uh, of like um, mapping buffers from one to the other and presenting. Okay, let's look at this Armali LPAE. We might be able to reuse this because 
Um, the Apple GPU page tables are actually just ARM page tables? Table arm. So how do, how do the flags get passed? Because if I can get the flags, um, done exactly the way I need them, I might just be able to use the standard arm mode. I think we may not support blocks, but I'm not sure. Yes, you do need to, you do need uh, two DRM interfaces. Um, that's the case on every uh, embedded device that has separate drivers for the uh. Display and rendering. It's the same on band for us than everything else. So in Mesa, this is called the render only support, and there is a there's already scaffolding for opening both devices and doing the right thing between them, so... It's all handled already. So, how many special cases are there for Mali? Um... Looks like Mali only supports blocks and stuff pages? Oh wait, no, it probably just uses the block flag. Even if it's a page. Oh, look! Inner domain covers the course within the GPU. Outer domain is outside the GPU. Yeah, I think this is pretty close to what we need. actually moving away from um, using this shared code because it's a bit confusing um, but actually for the GPU it's the opposite I think we want to reuse it because they are literally arm page tables um, the GPU coprocessor literally uses these as its page tables so as long as Apple don't change that it should be guaranteed to always be compatible with that Some special cases for the flags to do what we expect, but um, that's about it. Oh yeah, I hit it up on Reddit somehow. I don't know. So and on Pharonix. So uh, uh, yeah, there's a uh, there's a there's a funny thread. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So here's the thing, right? Um, what I need to do for this driver is actually close enough to the 
can for us. Implementation that I think I literally just want to copy it. I probably just want to like copy and paste this plan for them in here and um tweak it to be to do what I want and maybe you know mess around with the page table implementation for the flags. Um, because this is already tested and it works. But the fault handling is going to be a little bit different, but... But yeah, I think... I think that's the right approach here. At least for now. Um... So let's say that, tentatively, we can do that in C and just copy Panfrost, which has a working implementation. So the other thing is I want to see how this gets called. Is this an ad hoc interface for the rest of the driver or is there something special here? Do I have this indexed? I don't. So these are the um, exported functions, init, finish, reset, address space, get, address space, put, context, get, context, put, context, create, map and unmap. Yeah, I think we can export the same interface. And then it would be relatively easy to just wrap it in the REST API. I mean, I could still rewrite that in Rust, of course, but... I think at least initially it makes sense to just uh, reuse this code. I definitely want to reuse the page table code anyway. Yeah, okay, so let's look at the top level driver. This should be fun. Uh, let's look at how this runs from probe. So this is where the driver starts running. And the first thing it does is allocate some um, object. This is all standard stuff that like every driver does. Then it allocates a DRM device. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and there's a driver struct. Aha, okay, so this says it's a render driver. It does gen allocations and sync objects, okay. And then there's a callback for open, for post close, a list of IO controls, and an FF structure. And yeah, this is pretty much the entire API because then you just have IO controls for a submit. Wait buffer object, create buffer object, map buffer object, get a parameter, um, get the offset of a buffer object, some performance counter stuff, and in advice, that's pretty much it. So then it gets the device, then does some init, runtime PM, and that's uh, and that's about it. So the actual init, uh, I, I will say this, this code is really clean, I really like it. Clock in it, frequency in it, regulators don't care about any of that, resets, PM domain. Um, yeah, it's the set uh, of the nits. GPU, MMU, top, perf counter. So. Okay, this is actually kind of impressive. This code is really easy to read. It's really well structured. Uh, the modules are like um, named properly. This is nice. 
Does a stop reset initialize its features? Sets the DMA mask. Interrupt and power's on. That's easy. What's the job in it? I'm curious about that. Okay, so there's like a separate hardware for jobs and with a separate interrupt. And then it um, initializes the DRM scheduler. Is that documented? So here's the interesting thing, um, the Apple GPU has its own firmware scheduler. And so, you might not actually want to use the DRM scheduler. What I don't know is whether there is a limit to how many things can be in flight on the, uh, firmware scheduler. I guess, um, if we go by stamp indices, there would be like 128 or so. So maybe this can be used with like a large number of um, submission queues and then each one can be a stamp index. That might be a way of doing it. Maps nicely to the uh, stamp stuff I saw in my driver. I think the timeout stuff, um, we kind of have to defer to the GPU for that because I don't know if we can even interrupt um, existing jobs, but the GPU definitely has its own timeout, which I still need to figure out how to configure, by the way. Um, so, I think either way we have to defer to the firmware for that. Unless we find like a firmware stop call or something that can interrupt a job, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if um, performance-wise this makes sense though, because the GPU obviously intends to schedule things on its own. So we only really care about... Um, like doing kernel scheduling if we overflow the number of in-flight um, things we can... Sorry, the number of in-flight um, things we can have on the GPU, but... I don't know if it makes sense to put the whole DRM scheduler in front for that.
Because honestly, if you have more than like 128 jobs pending, it probably makes sense to just block the on job submission until a slot frees up. And I highly doubt that any reasonable workload that users are gonna use is gonna put, like, try to run more than 128 jobs at once. <laughs> so. I think. Yeah, the Apple GPU has a pretty different um, architecture to the to this GPU. These uh, most GPUs have like literal hardware schedulers that process things in order, um, but the Apple GPU has a coprocessor that processes requests to queue jobs in order. But then those jobs are queued and interrupt each other depending on priority levels and everything. So it, it just kind of does all the scheduling itself. So I don't think it makes sense to actually try to do all the scheduling in the kernel. Instead, I think what we might want to do is look at this driver as an example of how the kernel schedules things using this DRM scheduler and then instead of using it, sort of map the same concept to Apple's firmware scheduler. kind of makes sense so we can probably use this um for a lot of examples but then instead of using the drm scheduler it would be calling into the gpu scheduler tricky. I wonder if there's a way of doing it, or maybe that context destroy call that I found is able to interrupt a running job. I need to test that. Yes, you said my name right this time. I think most apps really only have a few jobs in flight. I mean, remember, we've seen the hypervisor tracing stuff, and it was very linear. on Mac OS and yeah I would expect it to be pretty similar um, on Linux because like obviously a game doesn't render more than like two frames ahead for latency reasons and you know a job includes multiple draw calls and you don't want to have too many jobs so even if you have a complex render pipeline with like 30 jobs and it's like a triple A game or something, and that still sounds insane. You wouldn't have more than like 60 jobs running at once. And any other app, like the compositor, you know, desktop stuff, is probably never gonna have more than one or two jobs queued. So honestly, I think for regular use cases, you will probably never exceed uh, the number of stamps we have for concurrent jobs. Dolphin tries to submit jobs every few draw calls. Um, so the other thing is we can submit jobs to the same queue and we can reuse the same stamps. Um, 
And we can also increment the stamp completion uh, handler stuff. So, I think we actually... We can have as many stamps as we want. It's just 128 events. Um, I, I never got this to work right, but I think in principle you can have... Yeah, you should be able to have multiple stamp control structures that trigger the same event and then just check the stamps to see when they complete. So I think if you're on the same render queue, um, you could reuse the same event for everything and therefore not run into hardware limits. I don't know if Mac OS does that, but I think it should work. Let's make a notes file of things to maybe uh, investigate. Does Mali and Apple GPU have a lot of similarity? Um, not really. The, the page table does. That's the thing I was looking at earlier. Because they're both based on the ARM page tables. Um, and they're both tile-based rendering architectures. But that's about it. Is it now officially out of the test phase to use Rust in the kernel? Um, if you mean if it's... Um, like upstream yet? No, it's not. Um, but I think everyone is expecting it to go upstream this year. So, it doesn't really sound like much of a gamble to depend on Rust at this point. I might actually go back and uh, investigate these things in the stream because I have a lot of time and might as well answer these questions. I think I broke some of that stuff on uh, the new firmware version, so I might uh, take a little detour and fix that. And I haven't tried that destroy context call again, so yeah, I definitely need to try that. to what we're gonna have to do when the uh, firmware times out or stops. Um, I think nobody has some handling for that. Oh, and I, I'm really curious to see if this improved in the new firmware because it might have. GPU is doing already. It just has this uh, dumb thing where when there's a fault, it cancels all in, fi uh, in flight jobs, which is really dumb. Um, so we need to see if that improved in the new firmware. But that probably affects App Mac OS too, so it's kind of a, a firmware bug we can't do anything about. So I just hope it got, uh, it got better. Yeah. 
this is for error handling. That's the other thing too, we need to figure out how to find out what the cause of um, GPU errors is. I'm also curious to see exactly how the fences um, interact. this stuff too because there is a weight um a weight thing in the uh command buffer so i've never seen macos use it uh in the taq but you'd think it would work included in kernel version 520? I don't think so. I don't think it's been merged yet. Unless something happened while I was sleeping. similar to the stamps that Apple uses. What's a DMA fence though? DMA buff.
I guess that these are basically like completion objects, right? For DMA objects. Um, so we're gonna need these for interacting with the DMA buff stuff in user space. So I guess we would basically map from GPU um, stamp events into these. Interestingly, there's the sequence number stuff, but I'm guessing it's not gonna be the exact sequence number we use. Maybe? Unless with the ops we can do it custom. Okay, and then that just does the... Yeah, I wonder if we can literally map the GPU stem stuff into DMA fences. And there's also this hardware, hardware signaling stuff. But here's the funny thing. Um, I think I saw something with GCP and some memory strange, uh, range that may have something to do with the GPU. So we might actually find that this is supported. Not sure though. What's the sequence number fence in it? Ah, oh, okay, so there's a sync buffer involved, an offset within that. That looks a lot like the stamp array we have. Okay, let's um, put that on the list of things. Um, what's this one? Do you may reserve the uh, reserve fences? What's this reserve stuff? <clears throat> okay, it manages a container of DMA fence subject associated with a resource. Oh, 
stuff. So like buffer, reads and writes and stuff like that. Right, right, so... Right, so this is for like buffer dependencies. I do wonder how these interact with the uh, job submission stuff. Okay, so let's look at the unlock your sequence create sequence numbers. Oh, and there's a fence up that only has the names. Interesting. Uh, So we might need something here if we have like all the stamps here as faint stem lines. Oh, and I see the slots are actually for the different types of jobs. Oh, interesting. So then it actually needs both. Um, Fragment and tighter chops. Oh, that might be interesting. Okay, let's go back to the driver and actually follow the uh, the calls from the user space all the way down to the uh, implementation and see what that does. Cause that this is sounding interesting. Um, <clears throat> but it's probably easier to see if we just walk all the way down. So these are the ops we have. Um, open, post, close, and then these um, IO controls. So on open, what happens? On open, we have uh, some private data. It creates an MME context. What happens if we have too many MME contexts? Okay, that doesn't matter because it's just creating it, not mapping it. So you can have as many as you want. Then it opens the drop stuff. And that does 
I get it. Just initializes the scheduler stuff. Okay, so this is literally initializing like a drop, I guess. So, is there just one drop for like file open? Ah, oh, there's drop slots. Okay, so there. This is for drop slot. Wait, but isn't that this isn't this the global though? This is global, so these stuff sounds are global, but this is getting called on every open. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh wait, no 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 no. So it initializes an entity for every possible slot. device yeah so there's just three slots so it's just um it's creating a scheduler entity for every possible slot created those for right right so there's global schedulers then he creates an entity for every possible job slot in the um for this context and um, that makes sense but now i'm wondering if the user space is supposed to submit vertex and fragment jobs separately because we have to do that for apple's gpu um in the kernel but i'm not sure if we want to do it at the uapi level for that so what's the uapi for pen for us like Okay, this is like a super simple thing. But I guess in this case, the job is all handled by the GPU. Um, so user space mm, just deals with all of that. So that's very different than Apple's uh, GPU because on Apple's GPU, all the management structures for a job are actually in kernel address space. Impressive how simple this API is. We're gonna have a much more complicated one, unfortunately. Let's look at what it actually does on submit. Okay, so open is pretty boring. Uh, let's look at create BL, so that should just allocate. So 
really trick some arguments, then just as the gym create with hand up. Is that a thing? Yep. And that just does... Yeah, that just passes through to gem. Nothing interesting there. Then it gets the mapping. Looks like it gets, um, it looks for a specific mapping. Yeah, so the thing about Apple's one is that the, um, the actual render command lists are, of course, built in user space, but there's a lot of um, scaffolding around that that is done in kernel space. And I don't think we can safely push that to user space um, because of all the pointers in there. Plus, um, that would make user space um, depend on the firmware version, which is a very, very bad idea. So. So create with handle. So at what point does this get mapped um, to the header space? Is it the in-map call? Be offset. It just returns the MM node start. So, at what point does this get the GPU virtual address? Okay, that's in gem. Okay, so that happens in gem open. Oh, okay, so this is in the GRM gem object functions. Um, aha! Aha! Gem create object is the... is what's doing the magic there.
Not very well documented, it looks like, but... Mm, where's the gym stuff? So gym open, uh... Where's the funks? Undocumented the... Gym object funks. Call upon the handle creation. Which I guess means mapping to a particular um, address space. Um, I'm planning on rendering another triangle using a rust with DPU driver. Um, well, hopefully, once I can render anything, including a triangle, you know, I should be able to render almost anything. Um, because it's, it's just, you know, it's not pretty different um, rendering a triangle to rendering the bunny to rendering myself at that point. Because the user space driver already works. So. Maybe I can do the KMS cube demo first, um, because that's probably the simplest one. Um, yeah, this one. Let's see if it works. Ah, it didn't. Oh, sorry, um... I need to pass this, otherwise it really doesn't like it. That didn't work. Oh, I think I broke something here. Yeah, there you go. So that... That demo... Um, it's probably going to be the first one that I would run with the uh, driver as I work with it. This is just another Python thing, right? For those who uh, haven't been following. And it's also just slower than usual because I'm printing here for stuff. You can see all the structures here. And they get um, submitted to the GPU. So the kernel has to create all this. <laughs> which is why it's, um, it's going to be more complicated than the pan first one. Which is why I wouldn't do it in Rust. This is gonna make this a lot less painful. The Pride Cube. I mean, it's this game, S Cube. It's just RGB, right? running. See if it crashes. It shouldn't. I did fix the memory leaks, but... And so it does a context get. Oh, that should be interesting. Um... Oh, that's just a gay ref. Um... So what does the context... Map. I'm curious as to what happens if there aren't enough address spaces. What caused that? Ah, oh, that's in job. Not even... Oh wait, no, that's for job slots, but that's never gonna be... Wait. 
No, but that's just three. Uh, I guess because the scheduler is never gonna schedule more than three things at once anyway, so then you only have three address spaces. So that can never happen. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, one sec, looks like I got something. I'm here, back. Oh my god, that was so funny. I, I got an Amazon delivery I wasn't expecting. <laughs> and it turned out a friend sent me a gift. Because <laughs> I just bought something and I was like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and apparently they just sent me one. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm back to this. And so yeah, I guess I'm done first. Uh, you can only have three... Um, Dress spaces. Um, but for a uh, for a single user space um, context, you would only need one. So I guess um, what you could do is just try to um, allocate one, and if it's uh, full, then also just block on that. Oh, hello! And yeah, I, I said thanks! Um... Yeah, so I guess... some kind of reference counting here and of course if, if this is done in rust um, it might be done a different way but basically um sort of um sketching things out here um
that makes sense. So when user space emits a job to the um, GPU, it will try to allocate and draw space if it doesn't already have one for that app. Um, set itself as that. And that can be done lazily, so we can leave address spaces um, set on the GPU. So when an address space um, ref count drops to zero, we can still leave it there and have like a least recently used thing. Um, so that uh, we don't have to thrash things around a lot. We also have to deal with the buffer managers, which are kind of the same story, and we also had a limit to those, and I forget how many it was. Do I have that somewhere? I think it was in here in Nitty, though. Oh, it was 256, so... That should be enough. Uh, yeah, that also needs some kind of a wreath thing, but it's always fewer than the number of uh, stamps. So we never should run out of them. So we're gonna have several things that need um LRU slash limit things. Um stamps, I think uh, how many that we have? I think it was 128 plus something. Where is the fault info stuff? Yeah, pending stamps 110 in hex. So, oh, so this is 256 plus 16. Uh, wait, was it 256? it was, but I thought the event control structure only did 128 events. Wait. Yeah, it was 128 plus a bit more, I think. Unless... Okay, I need, I need to try that. Or was it because... Oh wait, no, it's because there's two stamps, um, like the internal one and the external one, per job. And I think all of those are counted in the array earlier. So buffer managers we can have more of, um, those can just be allocated with the jobs, but only a certain number of them can be actually active in the hardware. Because we like buffer manager slots. And really this is more like events because, again, I don't think we can have... I know 
Apple aesthetically allocates all the stamps, but I don't think we have to do that. Though we could. Maybe we might want to in case the driver starts assuming things in the future. But right now I don't think I do in here in the firmware. I'm sorry, in AGX. Render. Yeah, I just make like totally random kernel objects for them and it works fine, so... I think the actual number of memory locations for stamps can be unbounded as long as they are assigned to event slots and those event slots are probably have to be unique um, for a scheduled number of jobs. I'm getting in the way. Hopefully you can read that. Okay, so back to the driver a bit. Let me save this somewhere. By sparse depth stencil, do you mean that those are separate buffers? This is gem mapping thing. Uh, that should be in the header file. Yes, yeah, so there's an MMU. And then the MM node, I think, is the virtual address. So I think that's the...
make sure I understand this. Uh, Oh, is that the... Okay, so get the offset is actually just getting the GPU address, right? Is that how it worked? I always get confused with the, um... The difference between get the offset into the DRM device and what is basically the GPU V8. So we don't have that call, um, it's just a dummy. We create the, um, returns in args offset, the... GPU address? Is that right? Some uh, structure anyway. Yeah, okay, it's, the, it's the same as this one. Um, let's look at the implementation of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's where it sets it on create BO. It just passes the MM node start. Oh, okay, so get BO offset is probably for imports, right? So when you import um, an object from something else, you need to get the GPU address. Rust bindings, uh, there would be unsafe bindings behind the scenes, and then, then there are all the safe Rust um, abstractions on top of that, right? So they are writing all those wrappers. If you look at the Rust for Linux thing, two things, right? There's the bindings, um, which I'm guessing are mostly imported from BindGen, and then there's a lot of these uh, safe wrappers, right? So these are all the safe wrappers. So there's, for example, this um, IO MMU stuff that we're going to need.
here's the, uh, the idea that I'm getting. Um... TV object management, I think... For user space and gem stuff, we can again just copy Ben Frost and adapt. Um... Which means it's gonna be done in C, because it just costs all those APS, but doesn't really do much. And for current space rust, um, which uh, needs to copy, um, probably binding some DRM stuff for that. some user space buffers, though I don't know if they should be gem objects or not at this point. Um, though they might, it might be okay to make them that. And since the kernel has to manage those, there should also be a rust abstraction for that. Um, but I'm not sure yet if it should be like whatever I do for kernel objects, um, just using different addresses or a mapping into gem. I have to figure that out. Yeah, the firmware stuff that's definitely not gonna be in Rust if I can get away with it because it's gonna be super painful to do it in C. Hardware cues, um, there's uh, four of them, and it doesn't really seem to matter which. Like these are like not drop cues, but drop submission command cues. So it doesn't really matter which one you send it to. Um, but I'm guessing there, it's beneficial to use more than one because it might have um, less CPU contention if you do that. Um, so there should probably be some kind of sticky thing where like different CPUs and um, submit to different queues or maybe different clients? I'm not sure. And yeah, then, so it's kind of the, um, that's kind of the, uh, the trade-off here, right? Like all this stuff I'm saying that I might do in C, like I'm gonna just copy Banfrost um, for the object management. Um, it would of course be pretty easy to just rewrite that in sort of one-to-one -one Rust um, using unsafe bindings. I'm not sure if that would be worthwhile. So that's something that I guess I'll have to talk with the Rust people about. I'm trying to figure it out. See, the thing is the... Um, complicated safety stuff here is actually not with user space because user space has a very thin API and it's all well um, supported already um, and other GPU drivers already do the like locking and stuff there just fine um, so the tricky bit is actually the firmware handling which is what I want to use to save rest right so 
I'm, I'm more concerned about screwing up the uh, firmware handling than in, in the safety there than in sort of the usage based API for this particular driver. Okay, this is uh, making some sense. Let's go back to looking at what the pen first driver does in the IO controls. So here's that mission. Here's an interesting one. Let's not require FS thing. Actually, let me look at Mesa because now I'm really curious if Mesa is um, really sending fragments and vertex jobs separately to the kernel. Interesting. Take this admit look, make sure no Tyler jobs from the context between our Tyler and pregnant jobs. So it does do two different jobs. Interesting. Yeah, so there's the sync object stuff, um, way before and after. So if that is mapped to the hardware, those would need to be stamps. And I think the weights do use the event. Um, yeah, I need to experiment with this because um, I need to experiment with queuing multiple frames, maybe even across different queues and waiting between them.
So how does this pick which um drop you to use? Get that? Okay, it says um checks for fragment drops. So another question is whether we want to expose the buffer manager stuff to user space. The actual managers are managed from current space, but use a uh, user space memory and on macOS the kernel just takes care of that. Um, but maybe for user space we actually want to have an UAPI for that. I'll have to talk with the DRM people about that. The good thing is that I can still just write the code to do the buffer management and whether the kernel code caused that or, you know, or we expose it to user space and call it from user space, that's a relatively small change, so that's good. Like, I could just do it in the kernel for now um, and then decide whether we put it in the UAPI letter or not. But let's put it in the notes. Yeah, looking at how Penfrost does it, it might actually make sense to schedule the job separately. Uh, which would mean we create the queues um, for every context. Like one for each, and then the submission goes to whichever one matches that. I just don't know if that actually buys us anything. Because they kind of always up, I think, unless you only have a vertex job, which I'm not sure if you would. But maybe it makes sense to, yeah, and just kind of do what Parent First does there. Um, that's something to talk about with the uh, DRM people. and block most of the driver work. Um, I can definitely write all the firmware interface stuff using the current um, simple UAPI. And uh, like hashing this out wouldn't mean rewriting uh, large amounts of that. So that's pretty good. for the submission, it looks for the sync out. Passes everything to the job, um, which it allocates at this point. So this, this I would basically implement in Rust, right? If not like a tiny shim, definitely uh, the bulk of the work would be in Rust. ID is interesting. What's that? I don't know what that does.
Looks like it just reads a hardware thing. Yeah. Oh, see, search. Um, that's on uh, from the uh, code search tool. Basically, it's a re-implementation of the Google code search stuff. Oh, it's actually under Google code search um, these days. So yeah, it's actually a pretty old tool. Um, hasn't really changed much. But it's just a, it's basically a, a code indexing and search tool that does um, regular expression lookups. So it's a like grep, but fast. We don't care about. Then it gets the MMU um, file print. That would be the address space. Finds the slot and puts it and creates a job in the scheduler. Copy in sync. What does that do? Ah, okay. The in sync object. Copying in from the user the sync object IDs and adding it as a dependency. So now I kind of wonder if, uh, like, how are we going to manage the mapping between these sync objects and the stamp stuff? Because if those are dependencies, um, we obviously don't want to, like, allocate a stamp for every sync object the user space creates, like, immediately. So maybe there needs to be a dynamic mapping there, right? Like, on job submission, um, those sync objects get allocated into stamps. Or when another job depends on them, And at that point, when the stamp fires, it gets freed and the sync object gets marked as complete. So if another job depends on it, you can just ignore that. Something like that, yeah. That's gonna be interesting to figure out. Um, like a dynamic mapping between uh, fence objects and the stamps or at least the stamp event IDs. So there's gonna be quite a bit of like alloc dialog um, machinery here that I need to make sure isn't racy with uh, multiple clients. But some of it interacts with the DRM SketchUp um, stuff. So yeah, it might make sense to do all of that in Rust uh, and make bindings for this stuff. I'm less worried about Gem though. That's um, probably fine to do in C for now. Okay, so copy and sync, submit, does that, then look up BOs. 
Does the lead gem not check the cups? Gets all the mappings. Which is really just... Marking it as used, I guess. Job push so that lock reservations so there is a global lens digital lock here It does an acquire object defenses. Then pushes the job. Alright, so this is just adding the dependencies to the scheduler job. So the hardware does that as long as we have the stamps. I think I really need to investigate that. I really need to do the uh, wage stamp stuff. Just to make sure it really works, because it might not, and then we might really need to use the uh, scheduler. I don't know how backoist does this, because we've never tried any complicated um, render workloads, like with multiple queues and dependencies and stuff. We might want to try that. Is there any, is there any good test stack for that? Like some kind of metal demo with multiple queues? That might be a good idea to test. So the BOs, if usage right, is that right? Are those always right modes? I guess that's how they do it right now. So the BOs come from... Where? Shop BOs. Oh, from look at BOs. And that was coming from Okay, yeah, there is a Yeah, yeah, there are there is an array of um, BOs. Which I guess includes the um, Inputs or just outputs? Not 
not sure about that. Okay, so what about the other um, IO controls? Wait, Bia, what is that too? That looks at the chat object. And just um, waits on the DMA reservation. Okay, that makes sense. So, what gem object is this though? It just adds it as a fence in the chop. I guess that would be for like the multiple objects for the outputs. Fans is attached to all the POs. So I guess, I guess any BO that is so I guess that would be right BOs only that are past to this, right? It says it always uses right node, but I'm not sure if that means that only right BOs are listed here or that. Then it has the dependencies though.
So other videos are implicit defense, his right is always true, which means it depends on shared defenses and the reservation object. But then... confused as to whether this is for inputs or outputs. Yeah, so that just waits. Um There's the reservation stuff explained. Okay, so you add a read fence. So they can always add a right fence, which explains why this works with always using right mode. Okay, so I guess what you do is you re you register a fence. That fence would be a completion fence.
And then does this um wait on all the fences? Or is there a reset for this number? Does it just reserves a fence then adds the completion fence as wait the completion fence as used to hold on. Render done fence. And there's a replace fence. Oh, that's just for the submit. That's fine. Um, so I'm still kind of confused as to like what the dependencies are supposed to be encoded as here. Initializes the job object. Then DRM. Oh, DRM sketch. Oh wait, this is this is a DRM thing, isn't it? Ah, right. The fences for the scheduling of the job. Job stuff probably cause uh, some kind of complete thing when it's not complete. Yeah, probably this one, right? Unfinish. No, that's just tear down.
Um, what is the name of the KDE Pink theme I'm using? It's called Hot Pink. What about that fence stuff? Right, so this is just for the, like, a fence within a queue in the drop within a quarantine sequence. And then it just does a cat and replaces the done fence with that before submission. When it's uh, complete, where's the completion? Will we be reading any of the rest drivers like Android Binder today, or is that unnecessary? Um, I might take a look at that, though. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that is going to be relevant, because this is a completely different um, driver type. So most of the uh, interesting stuff is going to be around this um, DRM API bindings. Okay, so it does. The queue, which I guess pulls it from the hardware queue. Okay, it's just a queue of, um... If it, it supports two of them per slot, I guess, and then... Handle done. It puts the AS, record idle. Signals the ton fence. And that's about it. So that means that the ton fence is really all there is to it, and that. is coming from the fence, which is a fence create. Okay, then who uses that? Ah, oh, the backend apps! And that just emits it. Um... So how does this trigger that fence? Um, get job chain flag. 
No. I'm missing something. How does this scheduler know when a job is complete? Using it as a sync object for the output, but there has to be one for. Oh, that's it. Not even that. Uh... Yeah. What? What the signals render done fence? Because that's the finished fence. Job, free job, run job. Oh, 
Oh, is that? Oh, it returns the fence. Ah, 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 ah. That returns the fence. I missed that. That's what I'm miss uh, missing. So, front job. Returns the fence. That means it's complete. And then there's a separate fence, so there's some... The Ethereum core would, um... Yeah, job done will... Signal the... And then it calls run job. Returns a fence. Adds a callback to the fence. Right, 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 right. So that's what's straining the fences. Side question Does Apple already use MSIX interrupts? Uh, you mean for PCIe? I don't think so. I think it was MSI only. But I'm not sure. The GPU isn't PCIe, by the way, so it doesn't matter for this. Okay, so that makes sense. So the return to here is chaining onto the other fences. Um, so... Back to the attached stuff. Right, so this is attaching the render done fence to all the objects. But what about the acquire? Oh, wait, I get it. Um, I get it. This, ah, this looks at all the existing fences on those BOs. Adds them as dependencies for the job, then adds the new fence. So that anyone waiting on these POs after that is waiting on this job too. Okay, that makes sense. doing for each fence of the right usage so if this is read it would wait for reads and sorry for writes if it's um right it would wait for everything i think okay this is good i'm starting to understand how the fence stuff is supposed to work because 
I really could know how uh, Linux managed that, so that's good. Okay, so I think we're starting to come up with a plan here. Um, I still need to talk to other people um, to figure out the sort of where to draw the Rust and DRM boundaries, but I can go ahead. Um, let's, let's make a plan. First, uh, the first thing that needs to happen to make anything work is... Uh, let me put it here, actually, so you can see it better. First thing that needs to happen is the uh, page table stuff. Um, without that, nothing else works. Um, so that I can just copy Benfrost, adapt it a bit to it and see. Um, shouldn't be a lot of work. And then after that. I need Rust RTKit bindings. Um, RTKit is the Apple firmware, um, like real time OS they have. And we already have a driver for that. Um, but it needs uh, Rust bindings. It shouldn't be very complicated. It's a very simple API. I can show you maybe. I actually can find the dude. Linux, Sock, Apple. So this is the RTKit API. Um, so yeah, it really just has a couple of structures. And then you initialize, boot, PS, wake, shutdown. You can check if it's running and then start an endpoint and send a message. And there's a callback for receiving messages and for shared memory. So these um, shared memory callbacks would call back into the MMU code. And, and that's how it would work. Now, if I have, if I, uh, with this, I should be able to boot the AGX. Um, whether I do that from a pure Rust driver or not, I'm not sure. So I'll have to decide that. Isn't the first thing that needs to happen the build source setup? Well, I mean, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm talking about the actual driver, like content. <laughs> um. I guess there's sort of two ways of doing this. The driver, the outer driver could be Rust or it could be the, um, C. Um, and then the question is sort of how do I jump around between them? driver and see then call a rust function that actually uh initializes all the rd kit thing sort of have an inner driver uh, of sorts that might work 
That's probably the easiest way for now yet. Let's try something to, uh, kind of like that. Frost comes from. <laughs> yeah, that I think that was Alice is doing. Then um, once we have the RTK bindings, I can start writing the init code in Rust. Um, which means first I need to write the kernel um, GPU object management. That mostly only needs the MMU bindings, actually. Um, but there's a story with allocators. Mm, yeah, there's the... There's that. Right, there's an MM range allocator. Uh, user space and um, current space stuff. I need two separate allocators for both sides. Oh yeah, because one is shared and current space is shared and user space is um, for a client, but So it goes from 32 megabytes to 4 gigs minus 32 megabytes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we're probably going to want multiple of these because we need separate... Well, we don't necessarily need to have them separate, though. Um, I know macOS uses separate ranges for different um, mapping types. We don't necessarily have to do that as long as we map things with the right type. So maybe we can just get away without that. A single um, kernel MM. Right, so we would need a separate um, MMU context for kernel space and for user space. So for the page table config, page table ops, 
Yeah, then there's this map and unmap like that. Um, because this is kernel space, which I don't think the page table option handle. Effectively, there would just be a shift in the virtual address space. Um, which is fine. And we also need to deal with the, uh... Ha! Yeah, we need to deal with the, um, uh, firmware managed allocations. That might be... That might be a little bit interesting. Um, so in that case... How does that handle pre-allocated tables, I wonder? Does it even? Um, yeah, you and T will get at least the user space memory from Chem, that's for sure. I'm not sure yet about the current space memory, though. So this allocates its own page table, so this is fine for user space, um, but for kernel space, that's going to be a little bit interesting because we need to import an existing page table. Yeah, I just need to reserve the address range, but the tricky thing is that this assumes it's going to set up it's all uh, its own page table, which is not what we want because we need to use an existing table for the um, top um, level of the firmware slash kernel table. Now, if this structure is, um... Now, this is private, right? So, we need something here... Yeah, we need something here for importing the firmware table.
Yeah, we could. I, I was just thinking of that of starting one level lower. Um, how many, how many entries were in the sub level though? Was it always just two? There's like F A F A. And it's more than it's more than two though, right? Potentially, although we shouldn't ever need that much other space. So maybe that's the ticket. It's too bad it could be more, right? Because the firmware uses F8 and the kernel uses F8. So it could go to C and E. So it could be up to four, I think. I don't know if that works. Unless I'm counting wrong. Or did I forget how the addresses looked? Ah, oh, that's still running. That's good. You know, it is F8, right? So you think it could do up to four um, at the top level, but of course, yeah, realistically, it probably will never need that much kernel memory, so we can probably just get away with, um, yeah, but just um, the next level. So we just set the start level. user space we do actually get the full table yeah that that might be the um the trick here and that way we make sure linux never even sees the firmware uh, managed addresses which is good no 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 i'm talking about the um I'm talking about the level below that because the firmware is managing. Now there is that, isn't the the top page of the firmware managed page table also a fixed address? The TTBR L0. Yeah, it's the graphics shared region base, right? I mean, we set that up, but I think it's supposed to be that. I'm not sure if we should be moving that. Considered the top level to be like TTBR zero and one, but that's kind of actually wrong because that really isn't the top level um, page table. That's just um, two different page registers for both halves of the address space. Then the next level under that, I think, only has four entries. Dump that real quick. I think it didn't... Did I get that?
Oh, there we go. So the... Yeah, so there is F8 and then... F8 to F8, F, yeah, so each one... Okay, so each one is actually... That much, so it would be eight entries, I think. So the firmware sets up two page tables there. Which are actually immediately consecutive with... Uh, yeah, they're all in the shared region stuff. I think um, 7A, 7C... So we set that up, right? And then the firmware sets up 7C and 8.4. Yeah, 7C, 80, 8.4, 8, 8. So it just sets up the page tables there for the firmware. And then we set the others up at F8. So that means that there are eight um, entries there. But each entry is managing like... What, 16 times 4? Like 64 gigabytes of address space? That's ridiculous. So you are never going to need that much. So it should be okay to just start uh, one level lower for the, uh, for the firmware side. Which is good. Okay, let's make a note of that. We're gonna go with that for now to make it easier. Um, And I forgot how the initialization story worked here. I think, if I remember correctly, that... We were doing it lazily on the first IO map, but... Initializes the handoff, then sets mm, both of those TTBRs. But by then, it already has the thing mapped, I think, right? right now
yeah, so the CTPR zero is not set yet. Um, but the data is already there by this point. What about the handoff? Did that do? Yeah, that did do a. What if I do it in the other in the other? Uh... Destroy that. Yes, yeah, so th these are already there, right? So the firmware already assumes that TTPR zero is at a shared uh, memory base, even before we said that. by invalidating the cache, but I think... Set, but the firmware is already um, creating mappings. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's hard coded internally. And the thing is, I don't know if the firmware might check that in the future when doing context switches. I mean, I guess we could find out. Um, let me just undo everything. And what happens if we never set the TTBR? Cheat on this and um, recurse level is get PT. Let me just try cheating at that. Um, Turn that, that shouldn't break anything. And if I just uh, don't do any of this. should already have the mappings by then. That did not work. And 
I broke something? Oh, is it because this is supposed to... Uh, I guess it was writing back. Right, it was writing back and messing it up. So it does use that for something. Yeah, yeah, it does work with zero. Almost. Oh, that was, uh... That's something else. Oh, interesting. So it does fail later. Um... Okay, it actually gets an event. Yeah, I thought so. So, um, I think... Yeah, I think what's gonna happen is that... Something later is gonna fail. Like, the something else in the GPU is gonna use kernel memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, th this makes sense. So, the... The GPU hardware itself also uses kernel addresses. Probably. Or maybe it's user space in the... Um... Processor, but there's something that uses um, kernel addresses, and that requires that the DBR one to be set right. Interesting. So there's that. I wonder what this is actually. What event am I getting? Oh, pull objects. is this See now I'm discovering things just by a uh, crashing the GPU. Our command queue info. Uh, 
I guess those aren't zero padding. Uh, which one? Or maybe this is like a new faulted flag or something. Oh, pad two. to initialize that Okay, yeah, so this is... The, yeah, so it did crash the... Oh, interesting. It crashed hitting the global stats object. Oh. Yeah, so it did hot the CPU. Sorry, the GPU. Um, and then on recovery is when it crashed. Yep, see, there's a... Th yep, there you go. So there, there was a GPU fault at a kernel address, which means that the GPU itself indeed does hit kernel addresses and it's the buffer manager object, which is interesting. So that means those buffer manager controllers are basically the tile buffers are matched by the GPU, which makes sense because they would be... Um, so yeah, there you go. So the TTBR1 is necessary to... for the GPU MMU to read, um, but the coprocessor doesn't care. And also the fault info is in the wrong place, clearly. Um, be right back, I'll just, uh... Just give me a second.
back um, three MMUs? I think you mean two, right? The co-processor uh, co and the uh, TPU, right? So yeah, I should fix that Vault Info stuff. Let me comment that out so it doesn't spam. We might as well see what happens with the fault now in case it's better than before. is fine. Is that just minus one? So the depending stamp is at least the right. Um, and it's good that it's just one, not like before when it was like messing up multiple submissions, I think. Oh, the stamp index there is just minus one. Which is interesting. So I guess that changed. Which also means that should be signed probably. drop a few to make sure we start at an offset and to just make it five which is a bit easier to see So to see there is like the um, event ID, that's good to know.
And the cubes.ca is right, um, because I think that's the cube. Command Q58. Yep, that's the TAQ. Uh, so that's right. And this doesn't look right though. QUID uh, is not what we had there. I think. But 10105 rings a bell. Maybe not. That five does point to the uh, right thing, though. Them, yeah, okay, so the UIDs are what I expect. But I do want to do that here to look at that. Um, when the when those things get allocated, I'm just gonna do the hardware data. Um, and the. Info is where? Ah, it's region C. Printing stamps is correct. Uh, I'm 
something happens and then you um, edit stuff for the new firmware version. We don't know what that is. Ten E eighty four. I wonder what that is. Looks like a stamp index. Possibly. Mm, did that change? Let me try changing these stamp offsets. See if that pushes it up. No, it doesn't. I wonder what that is, that one of one of five thing. isn't there anymore but I think that wasn't always there I think that was only present on some messages so maybe that's just unrelated also that might also be part of fault info because 100 looks possibly like no that that couldn't be the stamp value because it isn't DBRs need to be set, but the firmware assumes the um, the cover scissor uses uh, one of them um, internally, and uh, just assumes the base is uh, what is set as the. Oh, here's the thing. Wait, hold on. I have an idea. Um, right now, I'm. So does it only matter for? Oh no, look. This is interesting because. I'm not setting it for the GPU context, but e only for the zero context, but even then it's failing. So that means that even before the GPU context is set, it already tries to do stuff. And that's quite possibly because it might happen when it um, initializes the buffer manager before actually running a context or something? Hmm. Yeah. That was a nice experiment. And actually, no wait, I still need to fix that crash. Um, at the global sets, TA is definitely missing stuff. Let me fix that. Because we know the 3D one added stuff for the new version. DC uh, and current command queue are Our 
it correct, at least for that one cue at the beginning. It's possible this just incremented, like, uh, in length or something. I'm not sure. Pretty nice to trace that again. dependencies, I guess. Because we're going to need to understand that a bit before getting the fence stuff worked out. I think I missed something here. Oh no, the version, the version. Yes, uh, frames. Let's run the regular bunny for now. Something has changed here, yeah. Printing that it was in the submission. I think it's in the submission. Or not? Ah, here.
So that's, uh, yeah, it's fine running just half of them. Um, then... Do I just have four? Yeah, it has four, so that's the first two. Um, eight frames, eight frames. Then after that... Let's make it fault. Um... See what happens there. Okay, so after a fault, it definitely crashes on global stats DA. And this time it doesn't get the QUID, so that was correct. <clears throat> and it's complaining on 17 and 16, but those are from the same job, so that's reasonable. Um <clears throat> And then the recovery doesn't work. Because uh, global stats DA is too small. I wonder what it's writing there. Let's try. <coughs> Tracing that bra. And so we don't need a lot of this hardware data stuff. Let's comment that out for now. But the stats 3D, let's get the stats TA. Um, so looking in the render. Sorry, in init data. Global stats DA. Actually, I'll just. I'll just use the slow bunny and do a mod in between. Might be a bit more obvious. Let's do um, slow vert so the T stuff is, stuff is slow. And then I can. And not crash it. T1 current command queues are correct, I think. Yeah, it does get that. So those did not change that length, that's good. And there's nothing more in the others. Halted, resume. That's the A.
And there's a timestamp. Is that the right offset? Yeah, the timestamp is right. So there's just stuff added here at the end, I think. Um, it's not the count, so... Let's try just adding some extra space, seeing what's in there. crashing at least uh, try 20 and that crashed I guess it's larger than that Try 40. And let's see, let's see. And up. Somehow a lot of stuff there. Hit this crew a lot. I wonder if there's uh it's related to like Notifications? Nope, still there. How big is this? Let's just let's just go big. What? Ah, okay, now not 3D is missing stuff. Interesting. Let's find the TA size for this. Looks like both of these structures grew, um, but only in a way that matters for thoughts, which is interesting. Ah, pretty big. Um, grew a lot of data. I don't know if they massively improved it, but at least uh, it's possible that at least now they only helped. Um, we'll see if I can make it do something bad, but first I need to fix this. matter in uh... oh 
Oh, that's the CP. Okay, yeah, that's the compute stats. Which I never bothered working out, but looks like they just added stuff. Okay, now it's re uh, yep. Now now it's recovering from the fogs. Let's do the slow bunny and see if it... Basically, if a fault ever breaks more than one queue, then that's bad. Which it used to... Oh, no, no, they didn't fix it. See, this one faulted on two queues. So I don't know if all of them had faults in this one. Uh, hold on. Let me make sure I have an innocent queue that doesn't have any faults. So I am using the same context for everything here, so it's not impossible that it doesn't break as bad with actual multiple contexts. Um, so the faults are queues 1, 2, and 3. So zero should never get a fault. But the faulting uh, here it was three, one, which is, but also two, eight is wrong, right? Yeah, I think they didn't fix it. They fixed it. Like this time it faulted at two 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 three three one. Yeah, so the first fault, let's go for the beginning. Uh the first fault is at One. Yeah, one, one, and one, two. Those are the panic ones through the NTA. That makes sense. And what I'm overwriting is the depth buffer, which means 3D is failing. So in this case, render one faulting took down render zero. And if I look at that zero 300 thing, Hey, 
absolutely did not fix fault handling. Unless it's the context thing, which I can try. Let's give it a separate frame for... For the innocent one. Yep, and uh, the fault still broke. Render zero. Then goes to two stamp to three D. Oh, wait, this is interesting. Hold on. So they um they improved the uh, multitasking a bit. So no, I think it used to have to do this. It's um time slicing between jobs in different queues. And what's the quantum? Yeah, it's about fifteen milliseconds or something like that. milliseconds or something so it's actually um multitasking between two different jobs here with preemption which is nice because i don't think it used to do that i i had not seen it do that before i think so now it's actually doing multiple jobs at once um now i wonder if i give it more of them in the same priority will it do all of them I don't know it can preempt because it did preempt when a new higher priority job came up. Ah, 
not interesting, so it only really does two. It like slices between those two then. It did a bit of this one. Oh, wait. Is that the fault? Oh, no, but it wouldn't be because it only falls a bit later. Fault's there. Which is when TA completes for one. Which is when 3D starts and that's where it falls. But yeah, I'm pretty sure the fault handling is still bad. Because yeah, look at that. The first fault. Which is on the context for that one. Broke like a lot of stamps. You can see that it ran frame zero, skipped frame one for uh, render zero. So yeah, it definitely uh, broke a frame that it wasn't supposed to break. So now I wonder what happened to all the uh, extra stats? Data, what is in there? Is, is it just clearing stuff? Ah, uh, there's something happened there. Interesting, there's like a timestamp there now. Oh wait, no, that was always there, I think. That goes in here. Let's run that again. Okay, so these, those are still timestamps, and 118 is probably the same as this unk timestamp here. Oh no, it is there. So maybe that did move down. Because that's at 120... 12C, 12C, sorry, 12C in the structure. It used to be at. Wait, 12C, really? Oh, 
Oh, so that might be the stamp index, actually. So that isn't faulted, that's something else. Clear that look from the top. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but it looks like some kind of uh, some kind of busy counter or something. I'm doing eight frames, so yeah, it's not faulted. That's more like um, it's called it pending, pending something, pending frames or something like that. Okay, so the fault handling, what about the stats? Yeah, that, that timestamp is at 118 now, apparently. Oh, wait, no. Oh, is this like the... In TA, uh, there was... No, wait. No, this wasn't 3D. TVB overflows. Let me just try a smaller buffer to force it to overflow. Alright, it should be overflowing. Yeah, I know I need to finish the planet of attack. Um, but yeah, let me just clear this up a bit.
It does look like the TVB overflow has just disappeared. Unless this is... Let me just make... Hold on. Oh, no, no, no. It's because I need... Yeah, I give it a big buffer. Let's not do that. See if that moved at least. That's interesting, it... Let me make it not fought. Oh wait, 3D is always ah. Uh, he was really fast now. But it should still be overflowing though. Interesting, so it's like time slices between the first two queues, but then the other two queues it runs in sequence. I thought I had the priority set to Yeah, it should be the same for everything. That's weird. Let me do these slow both. Maybe it only does the first two because they're in different contexts? Oh, that would make sense, actually. That it only time slices between... ...cues that belong to a different context. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. place on the stats. I know that the queue is right there. Oh, because that's one. No, it should be there. Do I just have the wrong address? PDCQ, car command Q. Oh wait, um, no, that is. Yeah, I think this is just wrong already.
And that car stamp ID is definitely wrong. idea that that um, structure disappeared from Stats 3D. Let's look for the TDV overflows. Okay, do I just comment this out? Or rather put it back? You see, I don't know how I decided that that was missing. So isn't this address wrong? So the command cues are basically right. Okay, so here seventy four. Okay, this is. something yeah it makes sense i think i just messed this up at some point so unc 74 has the overflows at 2c point and it was probably also wrong in the other from where I'm um, just shaving some yaks on the uh, GPU structures to see if the fault handling has, has improved uh, since last time and I also want to see if I can understand how to uh, create um, like fence dependencies between renders to figure out how I can map that to Linux.
Oh, but they're... Not quite, uh... I think that did move. Okay, so here's a counter there. Oh, those are TV overflows. Okay, so there is some. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh... Yeah, it is F04. Then what am I. How did I manage to mess that up? Um, Yeah, I think I just screwed this up at some point. So they are off by. Stamp ID should be these, so to zero. And the actual F that would be F zero, that would be E. I think mm -hmm. did it just fail? Oh, just fell. Oh, Oh, and also that's... Oh, that's broken. Interesting. The render... Oh, well, that might be normal because I'm doing multiple frames at once on the same buffers. Which is not a good idea. Especially not with TVV overflows. Yeah, that's probably normal with TVV overflows. First one, it would probably work. So, ta -ta -ta. okay, car stamp ID is minus one, but at least the timestamp is timestamping now. He is right. Yeah, okay, so that's... Oh, 140 is... Car stand by D now. I think... Yeah, and 118... Might be like the waiting stamp ID. And then at 104 there is some stuff. Isn't that... No, that's the overflows again. Wait, what? And now the timestamp is right. I'm confusing myself so much. Oh, no, I think that's backwards. Uh... Yeah, it did this backwards, the... And those numbers are also off. Okay, 
Okay, yeah, so this is 28. No, it's more than that. It's, um... 28 plus a bunch. How am I confusing myself so much? Then the timestamp is right. I think this is broken all along. Um... So the TV viewer of those are a D4. Isn't that just one thing? No, it's not a one too far. It's F zero, it's F four, S D zero. I keep I can I can't keep count. Uh Yeah, it's F four. Wait, are those 64 bits now? No, they were just... No, 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 it's there. Uh, F0. First time by D. Okay, so... 1, 2, 3, 4. 38. And then somehow like a 44, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, there we go. Now it's counting right. Curse stamp ID is correct. And then the timestamp stuff is wrong. backwards but then the unknown things don't match yeah they do now so obviously that was correct I think I just looked at the timestamp and confused me with that I think this was always wrong um so then the timestamp is in the wrong place that's it Uh, the 
time is at 1.30. So it's possible some stuff disappeared here or that I'm just wrong. again with the other firmware but I think it's less crazy than before uh, yeah okay now the timestamp is timestamp and there should actually be some it should be like that I can actually see the values. Okay, there we go. So now we have the car stamp ID. I think that's probably some kind of uh, next stamp ID or something. So those unknowns look kind of interesting. Maybe it's like pending commands or something. I don't know. Okay, so let's, uh, let's say this is done, um, and now think about the, like, sync object stuff. So what I can do is, in the renderer, I'll probably make a new file for this, uh, regx steps. code for that. And probably just do a single context. this barrier command that we use for 3D to TA barriers. The question is, can we use it for TA to 3D barriers? And so let's say... Uh, wait for none, and then... None. 
And then for that, what I would want to do is, uh... Put that in work. And then we wait for the TA. So I think... I think that's what I want. We wait for the idea of the work. UID can just be UID TA. The stamp would be work at stamp 3D2. Put that render at stamp 3D2. So we wait for the 3D completion. do that before any init stuff. Priorities. And then uh, submit. Let's just do it manually. Um, not the frames. So let's um, submit first something to render free. Um, then zero, put work there. Then render two. And then render one, see if the order there works. And then let's put something on three again. Two more on three, and then something on one, one. Just chain everything. See if it actually does that in that order. Should also be 
Alors ça va Rien de ça. Actually, let's keep the um, TV size small so it overflows. Oh, stamp value 3D. So, these did nothing until we got to render 3. Yeah, that makes sense. And then that one completed. Two frames, it looks like. Oh, well, that's interesting. <coughs> because it shouldn't... Is that what the kick from work call is for? Do I need to do that? to uh, figure out how to do this by looking at whatever OSX does because I, I mean this is the obvious way to do it but it might you know it just doesn't work um, unless this has to be that wait isn't this backwards Sorry, isn't it that? It's not to the kick, because that just stems. Oh, 
okay, look at this. Uh, it did. It did, um, 3D for fake. No, that doesn't make sense. instead which is weird Just one sec. Um, yeah, it always kind of bothered, bothered me that there are two tags here um, in the barrier commands because I would only expect one of them. So I wonder if it's some kind of range or something like that. So there is a barrier 8, even 2, which makes sense. Then barrier tag 1 is that. command. 
let's see exactly what happened. Uh... Zero, one, which shouldn't be done yet. And yet it is. Is it because it's like a range? Is it a range? that it doesn't actually complete. <laughs> I'm going to add a timeout so I don't just, uh... Interesting, so it it's still going on render two, even though that shouldn't that shouldn't be complete. Oh wait, 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 wait for that's why. Maybe that was just the problem. I had the wrong address in memory. Maybe we got somewhere. Okay, now it's just not completing. Nope. Let's try 
extending the weight further. Oh, and this is wrong. This is weight for... Ah, I'm, I'm doing everything wrong. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now we got somewhere. That one runs. Then there are two, no, then zero, then two, then one, actually two ran, oh, because we send one word to everything, yeah, so look, first three, then zero then two runs two frames because the second frame is adjacent so it can't just run and um, that's the last one then one then three three and three again because the last one runs ten then one one and the last one the one and then zero it works okay the barriers work um does this matter Interesting, that crashed. Oh, non-sequential stunt. Oh! Mmm! Yeah, that's stem 16, render 1. If I do it like that, it doesn't work at all. Yeah, and the game also has stamp value TA, so I guess it's more like a self. I don't know why that's necessary though, but... Uh. Okay, let's just rename those then in very command. Uh, channels... No, uh, command Q. Self and weight value. Is it possible to bring back external GPU support for M1 Max via Sahi Linux? Uh, kind of, it's hard. 
and the hardware has limitations that make it impossible to use um, like unmodified GPU drivers and it's pretty difficult to fix it so it's not like impossible but you you know it's it's not a software limitation either Okay, so this is uh, answering some questions, yeah. Um, um, the other question is about the event control stuff. Can I have... More than one of those, like shared. So I'm printing the event fired stuff. Yeah, so this, we definitely get the same event multiple times. And then in the the event control stuff, I don't know what the base stamp thing does, or this for that matter. I think what this does is uh, it um, triggers a notification to the host when that many events have uh, fired. Because that gets set on the work run 3D and the TA. So probably what that does is when those events fire, wait, no, this is a global. Oh, hey, Ren, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. So, this was a global. We submit everything, we get multiple events. Let me print. And the ATX uh, event stuff.
I just did it? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have 25, 26, then 25 again. Oh, this is kind of interesting. I thought I was using separate structures for these, but apparently I'm not. I'm not pushing. Let's trade the event control. See if it touches any of these values. Oh, it increments. I thought it decremented. No, sorry. C increments. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the CPU match one. This is the GPU match one. 10 doesn't change. So in this case, it actually fires... The same events multiple times.
Uh, so maybe it's like a window. Maybe it's like a window within which it notifies the host. I give it a bigger number here, what happens? still works. I thought that it used not to work, but maybe I just confused myself. Yeah, I think that's, uh... If I only had one, we'll lose some events because it'll get stuck there. Maybe not. Ah, but it only ran... I think it ran fewer events. And... Can you get rid of the bond stuff? Yeah, 35, 18, 26, 25, 17, 34, 35, 34. Yeah, not one for every event. Uh, still works because it's still... Oh, but it only checks for those firing once. So that's actually... My code here isn't doing the right thing with the... Uh, the weights, um, because I should be doing the I should be checking the uh, stamps. in sequence and that does work because they have separate events um and it is just one oh we only fired 8 17 26 35 are those the right ones oh 3d For TA though. That's weird. Maybe just because it's fast? Uh, let's try the the frack no it did work
Oh no, this time out, sorry. In this case, we got 25, 16, 7. Yeah, that's TA, okay, yeah. So. If I give it, um. Yeah, then both of them do fire. And if I give it more. Then they still fire. And if I do two renders per render and also increase the timeout here. Oh, but this is interesting. Hold on. Um, the value is already four. Ah, oh, it, it still happens twice though, but. Even though this is getting incremented. Oh, okay, yeah, this happens for every event in between. What does this do? I see, I see. That's a coalescing thing. It's how long to wait. It's like how long to wait um, before delivering an event to avoid spamming the host? Or something like that.
Hold on. One. about that um oh but even a small value makes them go to get that Is it a count of like how many to call this? Doesn't look like it. sort I think let me use the um, give it more buffers so it actually doesn't spill over. GPU driver for the uh, next kernel um, for the Apple M1 GPU. Not quite writing kernel code right now though. I'm experimenting with some stuff. And it does wait. So I wonder if there's a flush thing involved, like... Oh, is it when it reaches event count? Oh, I bet that's it. Hold on, if I...
We got four. That still works. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. Maybe there's a flush thing somewhere. Maybe there's something that makes it, um, always, um, flush. Maybe for some reason it um, always flushes at some points. I was calling it work command sub C back here.
this right something there. Where is that one to do? Is that a stamp? Because it doesn't line up with that. Is it like an epoch or something? Is it Ankh 54? Ah, it's that! Interesting! UID. This is um, struct seven. In the start three D command. This one, Punk fifty four. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe it has to do with that flushing thing. Zero now. Um, it's got an event num. And then, if I... I just make it something random, did that break everything?
Let's see if that shows up anywhere. Maybe it's some kind of debug thing. Not sure what's that. Um, let's just grip a bit for that. Oh, here it's like FX. Oh, if he. So that reuses the event count for the first single queue, I guess. Oh, it's some kind of generation, isn't it? I think it's some kind of generation. Yeah, I'm going to call it Event Generation. I don't know if it actually matters for anything. But, um... 
Nah, we're good with that. Oh, sorry. The other one is always 50, it looks like. Okay, uh, I think that's, um, actually, I wonder if this 50 is, has something to do with the flushing, uh, just, uh, just a hunch. Oh. Even, um. Event generation. Wait, did I change something else? That should be there. Right, and then that was getting called here. Wait, I might as well just not print. Let's not pull. So what happens if I do zero there? And nothing much. Oh wait, that is start 3D, not uh, end 3D. Is it really only in start 3D? I think my console just got a little mad at me. Now it's... Oh yeah, it's uh, not happy. Ah, I'm too slow. It's 
Punk 54 and Star 3D, yep. Oh, and Zero Song 3C in Star TA? Okay, it's 54 and start 3D. This is interesting. Event generation and start TA command Y. Event generation, not event control. Um, interesting. So I remember that that thing set to one was breaking. Um, kill that and don't print everything. Uh, So I remember that when I got that wrong, the cube stopped moving. Try generation one. And then try using the wrong one. Plus one and T8 only. That still works. Uh, I don't know what was going on with that then. That will remain another mystery. Yep, it will remain a mystery. Crashed. Oh, ah. 
first forget to set the environment variable. Yeah, that renders fine. Some really weird artifact thing that I was wrong. Let's see if it works. Render's fine, no glitches. Try different ones. Oh. Takes a while to load. Yeah, it looks fine, so I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what that was about. Um, or if there's some other flag that I changed that fixed things. But I don't really know what the event generation thing is for. Oh, wait, I am. S Hold on. That was wrong. two to the event instead of one but it's also possible that um when i first saw this it was something weird or something else was wrong and that was just papering over it yeah it looks fine before this also kind of uh, make me curious. I mean, try the... The render thing again. So now we have... Oh, did I crash it? Ah, oh, no, same as always. only with the older firmware version. Anyway, uh, that's enough of uh, messing around with the... Uh... Oh, I just need, also need to fix uh, statistics at some point, but uh, that can come later. Uh... So, uh, the plan... AMU support, our ticket bindings, object management. And then, after that, um, start writing the uh, firmware object uh, manager code.
So we need channels, we need, um... We need, uh, we need init data, but init data is kind of boring. Um, channels, events, I mean, the same sort of as the Python, basically. Um... Too hard tangent complete. Um, but it's good that I figured out the barriers. Um, because we need that for multiple submissions to be to have the right dependencies. Um, now I'm wondering if I need the GPU scheduler anyway for the uh, for barrier objects that. complete yet I think if it's a if it's a stamp that the hardware knows about we can just allocate it but if it comes from somewhere else I don't know if that's actually possible but I guess it would be if it's like um, a barrier that comes for example from an external device then we need to wait on it like ourselves. And that might mean we want to use the scheduler. That's a question to ask. Let's make a question section. Uh, the first question is, um, yep, how much to do with the uh, Rust theorem bindings? Mind you, it's possible that we can actually. It's possible we can actually control fences ourselves. I wonder if there is some kind of command where we can trigger an event ourselves and then have it like pull the um, fence and have it like a software triggered value. That would be interesting. Um, so same event we already know that works. So that's fine. We can use a single structure for that. So that's no problem. Both of these work fine. Killing jobs is an interesting one. We can try that one.
Okay, let's do one more thing. Let's try the uh, contact stare down. Actually, I'm gonna take a quick break and uh, have a little snack because I'm kind of hungry. Um, so just give me a sec. Let's look at that um, context stare down stuff. Um, Cause I did do TLB and Vast, but not. I never tried the. Mm, I never tried actually uh, replacing the context. So. I mean, I assume that works. But I'm interested in whether we can cancel jobs. So let's make another experiment. There's steps one, we can uh, put back the interesting stuff. Yeah, I just ate uh, a rice ball, so it was pretty fast. Um, 
GTX um, hand style, I guess. So we can do that with a single renderer. Uh, let's clean up some of this junk. So we can run the very slow bunny. Makes sense. And now let's see if we can cancel it. Um, so we run them, and right after that, there is a destroy context, um, which I don't think I have found yet. In it, update LTS. Destroy context. Maybe look at the arguments for that again. Uh, Interesting, I wonder what that 40201 thing is.
take it at around 14 or that. Okay, um... And the others are always constant. And then for the context, we want that, the GPU context thing, I think. Two forty is the context info to of of the command queue thing and that is uh in here I think yeah uh, it's the GPU context address yep Let's try that. Uh, destroy context right here. See how badly that explodes. render yeah looks like that actually worked and um, wait did I miss something oh I'm done I'm sending the wrong message Okay, let's try that again. Oh, look. Oh, wait. That just failed. Under to find. So, what happens if I also was that the context ID on any one of those? It might be. Hold on. Hey, 
looks like it's always uh, using those values. doesn't really do much. <clears throat> Definitely doesn't cancel it. What if I queue two frames? Would it do anything in between? Doesn't look like it. Um... Now that is rendered normally. Okay, I also need to get rid of the uh and this junk. What if I keep sending those? kind of cash flash It definitely doesn't cancel anything. any other device control that is interesting. I'm just gonna strings the firmware real quick just to see if there's any strings that suggest that kind of thing. Not a lot of strings.
Yeah, that doesn't really, uh... Doesn't really tell us much. I don't know, um, might be worth looking for, uh, other, um, device controls. What if happens if I just send it some random numbers? That crashed. Oh, interesting. So that's looking for an address there. Just a test and just try random stuff just out of curiosity. So that's looking for that as an address, so that means. This is a 64-bit value. Uh, didn't do much yeah that doesn't seem to do much I wonder if it writes to that uh, one sec I'll be right back
come back. And, uh, let's see. What is 1EF? I've seen that before somewhere because I have it noted. Not here, apparently. Nope, I don't know where that is. Oh, there it is, money. Right after 23, that's not that interesting. Looks like I take some counters. Added and um, just experiment. Try all of them just to see if it does anything interesting. Try a bunch of combinations for that. Okay, let's try that again, and... Yeah, that just worked. 
No prints or anything. Just um, <clears throat> just seems to kind of uh, ignore that. We don't know what it is. Let me try that food one and uh, see if it uh. See if it writes anything to that address. I need to push that. Otherwise, it's not mat. Oh, but still. Interesting. Uh, maybe it's using uh, like a cash flush that needs more space? No. Um, what Linux tray am I using? Uh, I'm using Gentoo Linux on my um, development machine. Oh, is the per are the permissions wrong? Maybe it's not case shared. Maybe it has to be K object. No. Does it have to be user space? Actually, what does ISS say? 47 means what? Let's look at the documentation for that. It's a data board. And ISS 47 means... And that's... Translation fault. Push it. Wait, no, the, um, I forgot to, I forgot to flush the page tables.
There we go. Okay, so now it crashes. Oh, interesting. TA stage? What? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, K shared broke it somehow. That's strange. And that works though. Looks like it, uh, small buffer is enough. Is four bytes enough? Looks like it. It just writes like zero to that, it looks like. Yeah, so it gets something and it's um it's four bytes. Looks like that's about it. Unless there's an argument to be had. things um oh did she just write that is it just writing the argument okay that's funny oh is this like oh is this like a set stamp That's exactly what I was looking for for the external stuff because it is writing a 32 bit value to an address, which is what you would do to set a stamp, but then it needs an event. Hold on, hold on.
How am I gonna incorporate my GPU driver with the pan first driver? I'm not! They are separate drivers. Okay, let's... So then, let's try this. Um... Let's get a uh, stamp in there. Stamp address, wait for zero, wait for one, wait for two, and so I'm gonna give these this one here, um, tap stamp address, uh, event, whatever. So that hangs it. And then we write 100 to that. No, that didn't work. If I set it to 100 to begin with, That should work because I'm not writing anything. Yep. And now, if I make it depend on 200... the arguments actually let me print this stamp first
Nope, unfortunately. Signaling, uh, command, but it doesn't look like it. I'm just going to call it DC Ray 32. That doesn't do much. Uh, wait, can you actually call it? some numbers Yeah, most of these don't seem to do anything Try like everything. didn't go well. Okay, 
Okay, so something there crashed, but also... I guess I should, um... Work. To get what... Okay, there we go, so... C is crashing, so C does something. Uh, looks like D8, so probably an address somewhere. There we go, yes, yeah, so it, it is a pointer there, Um, give it some markers. I'm trying to send random messages to the GPU just to see what it does. Ah, okay, so it's looking eight bytes into it at least. Uh, and now more than that. Forty-eight. Let's give it eighty. Okay, eighty-eight. Uh, what about one hundred? Nope. One's more than that. That's dumping a lot of info. I wonder what that is. So maybe it's reading some um, pointer from here? Now it's 
still D8. Alright, that's a different thing. This one is crashing on 9 now. Um, so it's a different thing. So we have a... 9. Wonder what that does. 1000. Zeros though, it's not writing anything. Maybe it's just reading. Yes, um, It's, he wants the buffer, but... And it doesn't seem to actually write anything to it. And it doesn't care what's in it. Does... Anything change when I do that? It wrote a bunch of stuff to init data. Yeah, so one of those is coming back out there. And then that's also coming out. Is that in region B? All 
No, it's like a bit, it's like a bit, um, buffer that we don't know anything about. And it's some kind of array. Interesting. It's two C minus um I just turn it right. Not one C. That didn't work. Uh, maybe we need the other. There's a count somewhere. Still writing. Um, oh, sorry. The second one. These were all cues. I got the. I got the format wrong.
or C14. Yeah, that works. Uh, no idea what that is, but it's something interesting. some other commands let's try everything up to nine to see if anything changes something in the data got the dead beef written to it oh and there's an address So those did something, but I don't know what. Let's try everything else. Yeah, so 1B doesn't work. Okay, so this one, 14. Wait, didn't I have that one already? No, I don't. That one tries to write or read from that. pretty far and then it just stops oh uh, that 13 did right to that a 443 oh wait that was that was just that's the isn't that the right 32 I just no, that's 18. Oh, is the 13 also right? Let's see if that is the magic ticket. So that's actually writing, uh, which one to which one? Okay, that's the value. So that does right to the stamp, and let's see if I can put the event index somewhere.
but an M1 GPU driver support the M2? Um, we'll have to find out at some point. But it probably would, um, I mean, the kernel driver is probably the same. Um, and, uh, I'm already accounting for there being possibly some small differences, so they should be able to share a kernel driver, and, uh, I don't think the architecture changed much, so, yeah, it should work. I, I don't know exactly how much work it's gonna be yet, but it should definitely be, uh, supportable with the, uh, with the same driver. here. Sorry, I missed you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not doing it, unfortunately. try everything from 14 onwards That was the right 32, right? Yep. So 21 crashes. Oh, with them. Um, which one? Eleven thirty-three, so let's give it the buffer. Doesn't seem to have done anything. And then twenty seven dies. I get the feeling these are just ignored now. Yeah, 
that doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay then, yeah, that, I found a few interesting things, but nothing that quite, uh, solves the issue, so... someone can sit and cut for 10 hours straight. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I just kind of get in the zone, I guess. Okay, um, that's enough uh, random distractions and experiments for today. Um, I still don't know if I can cancel existing GPU work, but maybe I can't. Uh, that's, I guess, something to investigate later. But uh, most of uh, what I wanted to... Um, to think about for the, uh... For playing the driver is uh is making sense especially i'm i'm pretty happy that um i figured out the fences the um the uh, i'll say the barrier commands um and that i can uh have different uh cues depending on each, uh, depend on each other because that's pretty important so yeah this is making sense So yeah, that's the plan, is um, start with the MMU stuff, which is probably just going to be a copy of the Penfrost code, change it a bit, um, so we see, um, uh, and I have an idea for how to handle the, uh, page tables, um, being shared on the kernel side, which is a bit weird, uh, and then I can start writing some RTK bindings for Rust, which, together with the, uh, MMU stuff, will be able to boot the GPU, and then, uh, I'll start looking into object management, um, so once I have a nice system for that, which might involve um, binding the DRM MM um, stuff, then I can start writing the actual uh, firmware uh, communication code, like the channels, events, all, but basically porting the Python over. And I'll have to talk with the DRM folks and the Rust folks and see about some of the uh, design questions. Like exactly how much uh, I really want to bind that uh, in Rust. And some UAPI related uh, questions. And uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I think that's a pretty good point to stop for the day. Did I miss any interesting band for code? I think I got most of it. Yeah, I don't care about performance counters or the frequency stuff. I don't know what the shrinker thing is, though. Some kind of, like, garbage collector or something? Is there a chance that after the initial port, I reverse the all... I mean, I don't think there's a chance we're going to reverse all the instruction fields. Um, but could it affect performance or supported features? Um, supported features, yes. Um, in fact, um... There is one field that I need to work out about OpenGL depth modes. Um, so yeah, there's always going to be, uh... You know, new interesting things that we work out. I've been asleep while watching the stream. The BGM is so cozy. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It makes for great cutting music. Uh, all right. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we're gonna call it a day there. Um, I'm happy that I figured out the fences and uh, have an idea of how that's supposed to work on the kernel. 
and uh, a lot of things planned out. All right, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, do you want to ask anything or say anything uh, before I head out? Anything you want to you wanna say? Thank you everyone for joining me. How many people do we have? 71 people? What? That's crazy. Oh my god. 71 viewers, what? What's the status of sound on Sahih Linux? Um, Povic is working on... So the speakers work, um, but they're disabled because uh, they need to be configured to be safe and they need scaffolding for the like user space to... Um, to the DSP to make them sound good. So people are working on that. Povic is working on the output, uh, on the audio jack on the newer machines, on the M1 Pro and the M2. And that's mostly it. And did someone compare battery life to macOS? Uh, I don't know if anyone compared it. I think you get a pretty long, uh, like, idle time with the screen off. It's like over 14 hours or something like that. Um, but then, of course, you know, because it's software rendered right now, um, like, simple desktop stuff uses more power because it has to render on the CPU, right? What am I going to work on next time? I'm probably going to start writing the driver! Um, so this is what I just said here, right? The plan? Um, because that's going to be on Wednesday, because I usually stream for those who don't know or who've, uh, it's, I think this is a lot of people's first times because I ended up on Reddit, apparently. Um, so for those who don't know, I usually stream on Wednesdays and Fridays at 3 p.m. Japan time, um, which is, uh, what is it? 6 a.m. UTC. Uh, so the next stream is probably going to be on Wednesday. I usually announce them one day um, ahead of time. You know, just so I don't promise anything in case something comes up, but usually it's on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the, that's the plan, is to start writing the driver on Wednesday, so I'm gonna use the time until then um, to um, start some conversations with the TRM folks and the Rust folks and see if I can narrow down some of the uh, approach that I'm gonna use. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the plan. Um, good ICU using KDE Plus messages and ICDs. What dish are you using? Uh, I'm using Gen 2 Linux right now. That was the Linux the sort of reference. Um, this story is actually based on Arch Linux ARM. Alright, any other questions? Anything else you want to say? Did you like the stream? Like, did you... Did, I know there's a lot of new people. <laughs> like, do you like this kind of thing? See you next time.